Hey guys, Spartan765. Today I'm just doing a review on two SKS's comparison. Uh, Chinese Norinco Type 56, uh, Sino Soviet SKS, and a Yugoslavian M5966 SKS. This is an issued used SKS. This one was unissued. I know it, it is kind of hard to find a Chinese 56 unissued, but I got one. Um, Born, this one's excellent. Born, this one's very good. Very, very, very mild pitting on this one. Not even really called pitting. The bore is really shiny in here. It does not affect accuracy at all. If you got mild pitting on an SKS, this doesn't even have pitting. There's no black spots in the bore at all. Um, even if you got mild pitting, it shouldn't affect your accuracy too bad, just as long as your crown's good. On this one, the crown actually is excellent. Um, these go run about $300. They run about uh, 150 five months ago, but they're hard to find now. Um, you don't want to really, uh, what was I going to say here? If you're going to buy an SKS, you want to look for a couple things. Um, perfect bore, you want a good bore, mild pitting or better. Um, this doesn't really have mild, this is just, um, I don't even know what if it's even pitting or what the hell it is because it's not, bore still shiny. Um, going to go over the comparison here if you're looking to buy either one of these. Now obviously this is in the standard stock. This has got a T6 uh, stock on a TS200 site, pop-up bipod, tri-rail, um, rail covers, TAPCO 20 rounders, and a precision front sight post. Um, but, you know, we're going to go over the milling. Overall, quality-wise, like machining work, this one is better for machining. From the receiver, back. But from the barrel forward on this one, the machining is better. Um, as you can see here, visible machining marks. You can see on here, very shiny, very nice and clean. As you can see on here, shiny, kind of um, machine marks, machine marks on the uh, side, machine marks inside on this one a little bit. Um, very good SKS, both of them function great, very good accuracy. Um, couple things about the Yugos is you get an unissued Yugo you have to be able to know how to take apart a trigger group on an SKS how to you gotta be good at gunsmithing because um, an unissued one now or they're getting so rare that they go about eight hundred dollars um, an issued one if you get a good one with a good bore you're pretty much fine right there um, there's a couple parts or actually about usually two to three parts in a Yugo SKS you get one issued you're gonna have to replace um, or not really have to depending on how the condition is. This one happened to be in excellent condition, but just to be on the safe side, I am gonna or just I'm gonna replace the first part is your gas valve. This gas valve works, but it's not stainless steel. I'm gonna get a stainless stainless one so I don't have to worry about corrosion. They run about ten bucks in some websites, all the way up to forty bucks in some websites. And it's the same brand, same manufacturer. Because it's an essential part, websites will jack up the price. But there's some that are nice and don't. Um, the second piece is a disconnector. The disconnector is a piece in the trigger group that makes it so when you pull the trigger, if the bolt's not all the way forward, it won't go off. Um, the disconnector on this one is worn a little bit from the bolt sliding back and forth so much. It still functions fine. But a way to tell if your disconnector is getting bad is if when your bolt, if you, after you shoot the gun, after you pull the trigger, well not if you shoot the gun, you just dry fire the gun, and if you got a little bit of a click when you pull the trigger back, that's a sign your disconnector is getting worn. Easy fix if you know how to take apart a trigger group. Trigger groups are easy to take apart, pretty easy to put back together. Um, the only thing that's hard is the hammer to take off. They look complicated, they're really not. The Chinese ones are a pain to get apart. I couldn't get this one apart because the pins are stuck in there too bad. But this one again is unissued, so that one has no problems. But the Yugos tend to take apart really easily. Um, pins come out really easily. You don't really need to use any force. The only force you'd have to, I had to use in this was the pin in the um, bolt to get that out, to get the firing pin out. I was cleaning the Cosmoline, that was really a pain. Um, again, your disconnector, easy fix. One thing when you do is you get a disconnector, is you got to make sure it's the right length sticking up into the bolt, because if it's not, you can have premature firing, which is not a good thing. You can have rounds discharge out of battery. Um, that's not a good thing, obviously. You gotta, if you don't know what you're doing, have a gunsmith professionally do it. That's the disclaimer, do everything at your own risk, whatever you know, usual stuff. Um, disconnectors, again, you can get them at AIM Surplus for about $2. They're Albanian disconnectors from Albanian SKSs. I don't know why they 
got them from those SKSs, but Albanians are generally okay quality for parts, pretty good quality for parts. Um, as you know, the Albanians are the unique ones with the uh, forearm come up there. Uh, with the forearm and handguard come up to there. Um, disconnectors are an essential part of the rifle. The rifle won't fire without it, so, or if your disconnector wears too much, your rifle won't fire because um, the trigger won't be able to be pulled. Uh, another part, especially in Yugos, I've heard this from friends, as also as well as mine, obviously the safety is missing, the safety bar is missing. This happens because when the safeties are made in the Yugos, I think they, they're made some way, where the safety, you put it up and it hits the trigger and you have to push it out, so I tried to bend it back, snapped off, easy replacement, buy it. You can't really buy a regular safety anymore because they're hard to find, but get an, you can get an anti back ambidextrous, whatever the hell that means. Um, it's where two are on each side, two levers are on each side. Just grind off one of the levers and leave your lever on the right side and you'll be good. That's an easy replacement part right there uh, to do to replace the safety. Uh, it's easier to do it if you just take apart the whole bolt or the whole trigger group. The, uh, I heard there was a way you don't have to take apart the whole trigger group. I don't really know if that's true. But um, Definitely, I think it makes it easier if you take apart the trigger group because you got no spring pressure or anything to worry about. Um, yeah, that's another. That's those. Those are those three parts, and then recommended parts I would get for a Yugo or any SKS is a recoil buffer on my fully customized one. There, I got a receiver cover buffer. And this one, I'm going to get an H buffer, which fits in the receiver block here because um, the receiver on this is thicker. Or the re the part where the SKS buffer would fit is thicker and that one isn't as thick where it would normally recoil so I put an H or I put a cover buffer in there and I'm gonna put an H in here that'll always prolong the life of your SKS um, obviously you want to keep your SKS oiled and cleaned they're very very good rifles very accurate very reliable um, a couple of unique things about the Yugo is the fact that they got the grenade launcher. Grenade launcher, all the writing is still there and highly visible. You got the grenade or the bayonet. Obviously, your other grenade sight and your 22 millimeter Yugo grenade launcher. NATO grenade launcher. I don't know why Com Block Country put a NATO grenade launcher on there, but whatever. Um, one thing I'm also going to get for this later in the summer, just for shits and giggles, is I'm going to get myself a golf ball launcher on there. They got a review of them on surplusrifle.com. They're supposed to be pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to get one, see how they work. If they don't work, whatever. Who cares? But they probably will because they got good reviews on surplusrifle.com. Uh, your SKS gas valve here, if your SKS is not cycling, first you want to make sure that your gas valve itself is turned in the right position. This is in the grenade position when it's straight up. Um, when it's down here, that's in the fire position. One easy way to tell if it blocks your sight, then it's in the grenade position. If it's down here, you're ready to go. That's an easy way to remember. Or down here, you can fire semi-automatic. Uh, then if you still turn it down and it's still not cycling or it's not cycling consistently, just replace the valve. Like I said, you can get them anywhere from 10 to 40 bucks. Um, Yugo SKSs are very good rifles, very reliable rifles. Um, this one here happens to have about 90% bluing on it. It was um, not heavily used as I've seen some of them are. The cylinder has no pitting inside here, which is a good thing because that would just be another thing you'd have to replace. If you're not cycling after you replace this, um, then your um, cylinder is probably pitted out or something. Or I'd clean that out and see if it's pitted. And if it is, then you replace that. And if it's not pitted and it's still not cycling, I'd uh, replace your piston, and that would be the problem. This has a stainless piston in it already. I got this in Wind Century Arms and ported it. Uh, it had a new piston in it, which was kind of a nice thing. I think it's a stainless steel piston. Uh, Non-corrosive piston. Piston, which is nice. You never have to replace that or worry about that. Um... They also make stainless, I've heard they make stainless um, gas tubes for the Yugos. Be a good thing to get. Um, got any questions, comments, any message, button 765 out.